All right, so as always, we're gonna try to jump through these patch nodes as quickly as we possibly can. There is a lot to go over here. I'm gonna be skipping anything that is kind of like typical information about the league, the new stuff coming up, all that. We're gonna focus on just the big changes, stuff that you need to know about, things that you should be thinking about when you're thinking about the new build that you're gonna play, on the farming strategy that you're gonna use. Maybe the build that you wanna play is getting heavily nerfed or heavily buffed. Who knows, we'll figure it out in the patch notes. So let's go ahead and begin. So starting up at the top here, we do have the 3.20, 21 crucible release i'll talk about that more in a different area we've gotten snipe from the helmet is now just a normal gem we've got a couple new support gems here the mana forged arrows which is kind of just like a spend a certain amount of mana and you auto trigger cast a bow attack you have to spend that mana on bow attacks however we got prismatic burst which is probably going to need some theory crafting to see what's going on with this it is like a stat kind of based elemental kind of based a thing that triggers i don't know it's a little bit weird we'll have to see what the specifics of this are later and then we've got momentum which is replacing onslaught support there's a bunch of changes to the early game stuff which i'm not super happy about once again, talk about that later. Now let's talk about the league revamps. Historically, every time that they've reworked a league, it has been um, kind of scary. They, you know, pitch it as this big buff and everything, but it does, you know, end up being an overall quite heavy nerf. I'm hopeful that this is not the same case. The breach changes do look pretty massive quality of life wise, and I do like a lot of the changes that are happening here. So that you don't need to read through all of this, you can if you want. The TLDR of breach is that they are removing the middle breach stone they're only going to give us the base level breach stone and then the upgraded level breach stone the amount of splinters is now going to be affected by quantity but it is going to be on average reduced and on top of that the level of the zones of those breach stones is going way up into 81s 82s and 83s on top of that other sources of breach splinters are going way down and overall the breach experience is just being made better it's going to be more dense however the enemies are going to drop less loot because there's going to be so many more enemies but on top of that as well the items that upgrade breach items are also having their drop chance nerf so getting those upgraded items might be a little bit more difficult depends on how many more people are farming breach now besides Besides that, there's a bunch of changes that are happening to all of the nodes. I'll talk about that later in another video if I do end up making a video talking about Breach, most likely towards the beginning of the league. However, they have changed some of the Breach uniques. In particular, one that you should be looking at here is that the Severed in Sleep and United in Dream has been changed. It no longer has the minions have a chance to poison enemies on hit. This, as far as I can tell, completely kills poison SRS, which I don't think anybody was surprised about. The rest of the changes here are interesting, but there's nothing super crazy on any of these items that made me think wow that's uh, gonna be a whole entire new build but hopefully we find a few of those in the future abyss the tldr of abyss is that there is always going to be a lich when an abyssal depth spawns now the abyssal depths are going to be significantly more rare there will now be stygian spires that spawn in the middle of the zones now instead of having to go down and like check the screen the loading screen to see if it's going to be an abyss you know a lich or not they're changing some of the items Keep in mind, I do think that the actual item revamps here, they're trying to make it so that there is some kind of like build that you make out of using all of these items, overall individually it looks like most of these items got nerfed however they now interact a little bit more the darkness enthroned however did get a pretty decent buff if you did use that item before because now it rolls from 50 to 100, but 100% increased effect instead of at 75. Good for leveling. As always, there are going to be some changes to which maps are going to be available where. Notably, we're getting beach back, so that's kind of cool, but we are losing a couple good ones as well. Like we're losing channel, we're losing burial chambers, and so on and so forth. Read through these if they do affect your particular build. These always happen. And of course, they move around the different items that drop from specific maps that get removed. They are adding in the modifier that was on the simulacrum, the one that made it so that enemies had extra physical damage as chaos and inflicted wither, that is now on normal maps too. They're called profane modifiers, just means that you're going to need to have even more chaos resist, especially early on if you want to be able to run any maps whatsoever. They are changing the atlas passives that increase the quantity of items that drop from the maven's crucible. However, the final map boss on each map has 8% increased chance to drop a maven's invitation tier 14 plus. I don't exactly know what this means. If this means just the generic maven invitation, 
invitation, it's kind of okay. If it means any of the invitations, that means that this is super powerful. We'll have to see. The infinite sextant uh, harvest enchant has been nerfed. This is pretty much a no-go anymore. And on top of that, uh, for some reason, they're making replica uniques not have higher amounts of sockets and links is what it is. Now, the probably biggest change that's happening here is that they are changing the passive skill tree masteries. So there is a lot to unpack here because not only have they added a bunch of new and interesting ones, they've removed a lot of them as well. In my opinion, overall, this is some pretty huge nerfs and some pretty huge buffs to certain things. We're gonna talk about any new ones that I think are notable as well as any ones that are being removed that I think are notable. So let's go through the list. Under accuracy masteries, we've got gain accuracy rating equal to your intelligence. This could be useful for some like int stack attack builds. It could kind of be nice. Other than that, there's not really a ton here. There is this increased accuracy rating for leveling. Could just use this as an easy way to get access to some accuracy while you're leveling up, but then it is significantly less useful later. On the armor masteries, if you are strength stacking, it's an okay amount of armor, I guess. It's something. However, this plus one to all maximum resistances, if helmet, body armor, gloves, and boots all have armor, this is pretty solid. An extra plus one to max resist. Under armor and energy shield masteries, we do have a couple interesting things here. There is recover 5% of energy shield over one second when you take physical damage from an enemy hit. I'm assuming that this does not stack in any way. It's just going to be a one-time thing that can probably be re applied to you that will you know keep recovering that so essentially what i think this is going to mean is it's going to give you five percent of energy shield every second if you've been taking physical damage so if you're taking a ton of physical damage you'll just get a ton of energy shield back up to five percent we've got some sources of armor applying to chaos damage as well as physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage so if you've got a bunch of chaos resist or if you are say like a chaos immune in some way these could be pretty solid moving on to armor and evasion masteries we now have a couple interesting things here like every four seconds regenerate life equal to one percent of armor and evasion if you're playing a build that stacks a ton of armor and evasion like maybe if you get fifty thousand of each this is a thousand life regeneration every four seconds which is overall pretty decent it's not the greatest thing but for one point not too bad you can also choose if your build is able to to be either immune to poison or immune to bleed depending on which helmet that you're equipping moving on to attack masteries notably vol strike skills are now able to not get any additional targets from anything this has been basically removed from the game you'll see this here as well as a change later on you're able to gain adrenaline from a couple more sources now particularly when you change stances You've got an option for monsters not being able to block your attacks, which is useful in a few very minute circumstances, mostly like expedition stuff. And then nearby enemies are intimidated while you have rage. These are all kind of interesting. This 5% increased attack speed per enemy in close range. Maybe there's something that could be abused here, but I'm not exactly sure. They've added in a ton of stuff of like more spell damage if you've been stunned and things that happen while you're stunned and defenses while you're stunned. Honestly, I'm not too happy about this like new weird obsession where they're like giving you bonuses to being stunned because most of the time when you're stunned in Path of Exile, you're just dead. And then uh, we've got 25% chance to open the nearby chests when you cast a spell. I'm probably going to try to do some weird at Ziri's map farming thing with this just for memes, but uh, a, a very, a very interesting thing to it put on a caster mastery. So thanks, I guess, GGG. Under Chaos Masteries, we've got Recover Life per Wither debuff on each enemy that you kill. This could be pretty good, especially if you are taking the one with a 5% chance to inflict Wither up to 15 stacks of Wither instead. Could be a lot of life recovery while you're just randomly running around and clearing. There is also another source of maximum Chaos Resistance here. Under Claw Mastery, we have some interesting changes. This is overall a nerf, in my opinion, because now it is only with Claws, as well as you have to use two weapons, an offhand and a main hand, to be able to do this. You do gain 25 if you're doing that, but it's very rare that builds are honestly using two Claws. So this is overall a nerf to any build that was kind of using this Mastery just to have the Mastery. However, they are making it so that if you are dual wielding with two Claws, you're getting some extra bonuses. And then on top of that, Leech is instant per equipped Claw as well as increased stealth, which is interesting to say the least. Most of the new masteries do have a maximum resistance applied to them now. You've got chances to apply exposure of the different types of elements. We do have finally an easy source of being covered in frost. Now, if you shatter, it has a 20% chance for any nearby enemies to be covered in frost. And this new very interesting mastery, which is enemies permanently take 5% increased damage for each second they've ever been frozen by you up to a maximum of 50%. So 
Interestingly enough, bosses can be frozen. I'm wondering how exactly this interaction is going to work because there's a chance that this could be extremely powerful for any build that is trying to stack duration of cold elements. We'll see how this goes, but this is going to take some testing. This is going to take some clarification from GGG to know exactly how good this is going to be. Dagger Masteries are basically getting nothing. Elemental Masteries are getting a couple weird things. Hits have 25% chance to treat enemy monster elemental resistance values as inverted. So if the enemy has 75 elemental resist, this is a 25% chance for a hit to just treat it as negative 75 elemental resist. And also, if you take this and the enemy has negative resistances, that means it will give it positive resistances. This won't work with things that ignore elemental resist, of course. So a bit of a weird option, but maybe it's good for a build that can't really get any elemental penetration. And this just gives you a chance to do more damage. So it should be pretty solid. We have critical strikes against you do not inherently inflict elemental ailments. Most builds are trying to go elemental ailment immune these days. So this isn't super useful, but it could be something to use early on. And then we have 3% chance for hits to deal 300% of physical damage as extra damage of a random element. This is kind of just like a random damage bonus, and it'll give you like a big random hit every once in a while. Kind of cool, a bit weird though, a bit inconsistent consistent. Under energy shield masteries, um, we do have less physical damage taken while in full energy shield, which could be useful for builds that say use energy shield as like a mana source or something else. But that is honestly about it besides like that very first hit that hits you when you are on full energy shield. So it could be okay. We've got 30% of chaos damage not being able to bypass energy shield. This was moved from a separate, I think it was like the armor energy shield mastery that it was on before. And then also increase energy shield from your equipped helmet, which is pretty good. We have the 15% chance to suppress spell damage if the different items have evasion rating. This was moved off of the suppression mastery onto the evasion mastery. Under evasion and energy shield mastery, we do have a couple interesting things. You're now going to have the option to have intelligence scale your invasion rating instead of dexterity. And on top of that, you will be able to regenerate energy shield equal to 1% of your evasion rating over one second, both pretty interesting. We'll see how useful those end up being. Under Fire Mastery, we have a chance for burning enemies to explode, dealing a tenth of their life as fire damage. Could be pretty solid. A 50% chance to refresh Ignite Duration on Critical Strike. This, in my mind, is going to mean two particular things. One, it's going to mean that builds that are able to apply one very large Ignite are only going to have to do that once, as long as you are able to hit them in some way. However, you are going to have to hit them with a Critical Strike in some way. So keep in mind, if you can crit, you might be able to keep this going. So maybe abilities that have like permanent chance to crit or like a guaranteed crit in some way, like the new um, Lightning Tendrils has like a guaranteed crit on every third pulse now, something like that could mean that you could just keep the Ignite going indefinitely. Otherwise, you could make a kind of crit based build where you would be able to stack infinite Ignites. I'm sure someone will be able to do something with that. This regenerate life per second for each 1% uncapped fire resistance is kind of okay, but it's uncapped, so we'll see if this does anything. For non-crit ignite builds, 100% um, increased damage with hits against ignited enemies is okay. We'll see how useful that ends up being. Probably just one of those things that you take just because. Notably, they've moved basically the main reason that you go a Pathfinder onto a Flask Mastery, which I guess is okay. Um, they have nerfed it from six down to four. We will talk in a separate video about all of the changes that happened to the Pathfinder as well as the Saboteur because they're a little bit weird, but we'll see how that goes. We've also got 25% chance to gain a flash charge when you deal a critical strike. I'm assuming this probably has an internal like one second cooldown or something like that. So not as crazy as it might seem. We also have the enemies you kill that are affected by elemental ailments, grant increased flash charges. That was also on the Pathfinder as well. Fortify Mastery is giving you gain 20 fortification on melee kill against rare unique enemies. This could be good to have some fortify up while you're mapping. It's not really going to be too useful on killing unique enemy because most of the time after the unique enemy is dead, um, you're not really fighting anymore so it doesn't really matter right we've got 40 percent reduced duration of ailments on you if you are fortified because typically you're going to have about 20 fortify most times that's pretty solid if you can stack this with some other sources of reduced duration of elemental ailments you could become immune to elemental ailments pretty easily recovering life for fortification lost um could be okay it's going to just give you a bunch of life as you lose those stacks of fortify maybe if you're like not attacking the boss or something like that but it's typically pretty bad to lose stacks of fortify so i'm not sure about this honestly these two new impale masteries really confuse me if I'm going to be real with you. 
Um, the first one is just a overall really solid ability. 10% chance on hitting an enemy for all impales on that enemy to last for an additional hit. So this is pretty powerful. It's just like a 10% chance for you to just gain plus one impale on all of your impales that are on the enemy. And then the other one that we've got here, which honestly, good luck to the POB devs to figuring out how much damage this is actually gonna do. 20% chance on hit to remove all impales from the enemy, and then impales removed this way multiply their reflected damage for this hit by the number of hits they have left. So if you apply an impale and you have a 10% chance on hitting an enemy for all impales that are on that enemy to last an additional hit, if your impale is lasting like five or six hits, it's going to multiply the amount of damage that that impale would have done by like five or six. So there's like a 20% chance to just get a ton of damage. I, 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 don't, I don't exactly know <laughs> I have no idea, to be honest with you. It looks good. At first glance, this looks really solid. Uh, it means that almost always you're not going to need to worry about pulling things out of the enemy ever, except for just refreshing your Call of Steel, which was the case anyways. So I don't know how to feel about it. I think this is probably going to be good. Couldn't tell you, it's a very weird line. We have Leech Masteries that are basically all new. We've got 10% of Leech being instant, pretty solid. Increased armor and evasion rating, could be good. 25% more damage with hits against enemies that cannot have life leeched from them. I'm not exactly sure what this means. Like, I'm guessing if the enemy is immune to leech for some reason, or maybe it's that you can't leech. I don't know. I'm honestly not sure. 25% of damage taken recouped as life if leech was removed by filling your unreserved life leech recently. This means that if you don't have over leech in any way and you fill your health bar, that this is going to give you 25% damage recoup, which is pretty good, honestly. And then the classic increased maximum life mana energy shield recovery per second from leech. Under the Lightning Masteries, we've got increased critical strike chance against enemies with lightning exposure, and we do have lightning damage of enemies hitting you while you are shocked is unlucky. If this was all damage, it'd be pretty broken, but with it just being lightning damage, not exactly sure how I feel about it. Now, the Life Masteries have been changed pretty heavily. Um, we've got 10% more maximum life if you have at least six Life Masteries allocated. Keep in mind, that's all of them. There's only six here. So you need to take basically every Life Mastery on the tree, but you get 10% more life if you do that. And then we have 15% increased maximum life if there are no life modifiers on equipped body armor. So this is replacing the old 10% that you got. However, this doesn't have the downside of the 10% reduced life recovery rate. It's basically just making it so that you can take this instead of getting life on your body armor. But if you're getting a really super high life total on your body armor, it depends on which one of these is going to be better. I'm not sure how I feel about this yet. Overall, it looks like it's probably a buff in general. Not exactly sure about that though. 50 life is still there though. Now, most interestingly here, you count on low life while at 55% of maximum life or below. That doesn't really mean very much to me. However, you count as on full life while at 90% of maximum life or above. This is pretty insane. There's a lot of things that allow you to say, do increased damage or have some kind of effect when you are on full life but it's very hard to stay at perfectly full life. You can stay at like 98, 99 pretty easily. This is going to make a lot of those effects significantly more powerful. And I'm interesting to see what people are able to figure out with this. This is basically just remove 30% of mana cost, which is pretty solid. I like this. If you have a ton of life recovery, this is pretty good. Um, Link Masteries, there's only one notable thing here, and that's your movement speed is equal to the highest movement speed amongst linked players. So if you are in, say, like a group of two or three, and one of the people in your group has insane movement speed, you can link to them, and then your movement speed is all linked, so that's pretty cool. And then on top of that, links to one additional random target, so that is also pretty cool. I mean, I guess it's cool that they're actually making links somewhat worthwhile, but this is a single player game, so I don't really care. Now, don't get excited. I know that a lot of you guys saw Mana Masteries, and keep in mind, it's Mana Masteries, not Reservation Masteries. I know you guys saw this and you got real excited. This is a buff, but there are a lot of nerfs to come, so don't get too happy yet. Notably, they've given you the option for some mana regen that you normally get from the Alira Bandit, which I really like that this is here because this is just something you can take early game to fix your mana problems instead of having to take Alira and then respec it later. Super happy with this mastery. However, 12% increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. They removed a lot of mana reservation efficiency from other masteries. I actually think they removed all of it. And this is on a mana mastery. So now you have to get mana nodes to be able to take this. So don't get too excited just yet. 
If your build didn't use any of the previous masteries, which pretty much all of you should have been using them, this is a buff, so good for you, but that's basically for just like builds that uh, were kind of trolling previously. You now gain 5% increased area of effect for each mine, meaning that you will be able to get much bigger AoE on all of your abilities if you stack a whole bunch of mines on the floor. Could allow for some interesting overlap stuff. When it comes to marked masteries, marked enemies cannot regenerate life is really, really good for bosses that regenerate. Think of like the Maven healing things or things like that. This is going to be super solid for that. Marked enemies cannot deal critical strikes. Also a good thing that you could take. Marks transferring to another enemy when a marked enemy dies is okay, but this isn't as useful as it might seem. It will be nice, but most of the time you're just going to be manually marking the targets that you need anyways. Don't know that this is worth a mastery point. Under physical masteries, we've got 10% more maximum physical attack damage. This is really solid. Um, chance to ignore enemy monster physical damage reduction could be good, but a lot of the builds that do use physical damage are probably impaling anyways when they're using attack, so this isn't actually that useful, but it's okay. We'll see. I'm not sure that this will actually be used or not. Poison enemies cannot deal critical strikes. Poison masteries are pretty highly contested, so this is going to be a little bit rough to take, but it is interesting. This was something that I think was on the tree previously, not 100 percent certain about that your elemental resistances cannot be lowered by curses is kind of cool and damaging elements cannot be inflicted on you while you already have one is also kind of cool there could be some like shenanigans you could do with this where you could force one ailment on yourself of each kind but become unaffected by it and then it makes it so that the other ones can't be applied to you maybe some cool stuff like that we have all new recovery masteries so three percent chance to recover all of your life when you kill an enemy is interesting i guess i don't know how i feel about that life recoup effects instead of occur over three seconds, which is a pretty big buff if you're doing a lot of recoup. We've got every three seconds, consume a nearby corpse to recover 10% of your life. Also a really cool one. That's something that you got from, uh, what is it? Was it Devouring Diadem that did this previously? It gave you like the Feast of Katava thing. This also, interestingly enough, will give you has consumed a corpse recently, no matter what. Nearby enemies have reduced life regeneration rate. Also just a useful thing that you can get for some bosses. And then life recovery from regeneration is not applied, but every four seconds recover one life for every 0.1 life recovery per second from regeneration. So this is essentially just changing life regeneration into an instant recovery, essentially is what this is doing. Now, depending on the wording here, at first glance, I thought that this quadruple your life regeneration into life recovery, but I'm not exactly sure that it does that because it says every four seconds recover one life for every 0.1 life recovery per second. So I think that that just means you get your normal regeneration. I'm not 100% certain there, but um, I guess we'll find out later. Under reservation masteries, we've got plus one to all maximum elemental resistances if you have reserved both life and mana. That is pretty cool. Rest of this has not really changed. Spell suppression masteries have changed a lot. They've removed basically all of them and there's a bunch of new different ones. So now you inflict fire, cold, and lightning exposure on enemies when you suppress their spell damage. So if they deal any elemental damage, they're getting all of those exposures. We've got a way that you can stack more spell suppression than normal and get some extra effects out of it. Although I don't know how useful this is going to be because stacking more than 100% spell suppression is honestly really tough. Now with suppressed spell damage, you cannot have inflicted elemental ailments on you. Keep in mind, this is not going to stop attacks from doing that. So this is not just elemental ailment immunity. It also has to come from a spell. So it's not going to do it for like ground effects and other things like that. There is a source of phasing if you have suppressed spell damage recently and 8% chance to suppress spell damage while you are phasing. Pretty good. And then a very much needed early easy way to access a significantly higher chance to suppress spell damage through chance to suppress spell damage is lucky. Now we got some new stun masteries. Um, I'm not super happy about any of these. They're not really that cool. I'm sure someone will abuse this gain adrenaline when stunned and for two seconds per 100 milliseconds of stun duration. This isn't really going to be useful for 99% of builds, but some big brain person is going to figure out a way to break this. We got 25% chance to deal a stunning hit to nearby enemy monsters when you're stunned. So I'm sure there's going to be some kind of weird like self-inflicted stun build that'll like perma stun bosses or something something crazy like this that'll have to be nerfed the rest of this is honestly not too super interesting um you can't really stun things very super easily so is what it is if you do manage to be able to stun bosses crit strike multiplier is pretty cool i guess under trap masteries we've got eight percent chance for traps to trigger an additional time that's cool just some extra damage under two-handed masteries we've got ruthless hits intimidate enemies for four seconds i think this was previously an attack mastery and then under Warcry masteries um we've got the node that was on the tree previously previously is now a mastery. We've got remove all damaging ailments when you war cry. Could be decent, but typically you want to be immune to these anyways. And then war cries have 10% chance to exert three additional attacks. Could also be pretty decent sometimes. 
But let's talk about removed masteries. They removed every single mastery that gave you increased mana reservation efficiency. So basically, lots of people were either using Determination or Grace. Those have both been removed. Lots of people were using Precision. That's been removed. All of the banner ones have been removed. The Discipline one has been removed. Honestly, it's a pretty huge nerf to builds that were just using those auras. Um, you don't have to go and grab all those different things now, which I guess is good, and it opens up availability to get other nodes, but overall I think it's a pretty huge nerf to most builds that were using all of those auras, but if you used a ton of auras beyond that, then maybe you might break even. I really don't know. I'm going to wait for someone to do the math on all of this, but I'm not super excited to see this. We'll see. So don't get your pitchforks out just yet, but keep them at the ready. Beyond that, um, I'm just gonna go through the ones that I think are interesting or useful for you to know that have been removed. So let's jump to each of those. A lot of people use the plus one to chaos damage over time multiplier per four chaos resistance. This has been removed. Honestly, kind of a nerf to chaos damage, which I guess everyone was using poison stuff before anyways, so it probably doesn't matter that much. Claws no longer have the built-in chance to blind. However, I think this is on the tree now. Not 100% certain about that. Most of the cold masteries that you see got removed here have been moved to the tree. So that is good that these are still available. The 40% increased effect of non-damaging ailments also I think has been moved to the the tree however the just generic 15 percent all elemental resistances has been removed which kind of sucks because this was useful for a lot of builds early on lightning has both lost lightning damage with non-critical strikes is lucky and non-projectile chaining lightning skills chain one additional time losing both of those is pretty rough for a couple of builds I'm surprised to see that once again i'm not super happy with the 10 percent increased maximum life being removed but now i guess maybe it's going to open up some availability for other mods on a chess piece and you don't have to have life on a chess piece but now if you get a chess piece with just a little bit of life on it accidentally it's a huge nerf to your survivability so unlucky they've removed the increased poison duration as a try to slightly nerf poison it is unfortunate but there's a ton of good poison ones that you can take so not that big of a deal they've removed the generic all elemental and chaos resistance modifier here just removing more resistances from the tree so that it's more difficult to get them and you have to get more on gear and we'll talk about the leveling stuff that they've changed later on as well they've notably removed the critical strike chances increased by your chance to suppress spell damage it's really unfortunate because i really liked this um they've removed the reduced extra damage from suppressed critical strikes and they've changed the 12% chance here to go on to the evasion mastery that is I know it was a lot but that's everything that had to do with the masteries and that's the vast majority of what we're going to go over in these patch notes the rest of this isn't too much there's two big new passive skill clusters as well as some like added um recovery mechanic type ones but the big ones that i want to talk about are going to be the righteous fury cluster which gives you 10 percent chance to create consecrated ground on melee kill and 40 percent increased melee damage with hits at close range and then for bows master fletcher has been changed to have bow attacks fire an additional arrow and then there is also a new uh, multi-shot cluster that's being made that is just going to be attacks fire an additional projectile both of those pretty solid especially if you're playing a bow build as i said previously most of the cold masteries from before have been moved into the cold clusters Fortify clusters, in my opinion, have been nerfed pretty heavily, unfortunately. The increased damage with attack skills from the Rampart notable, as well as the two nodes before it, were completely removed, and now it's like armor and evasion rating and chance to fortify with melee hits. If you were a champion before, an attack-based champion, you took these nodes, so you've just lost, like, I, I don't know, 70% increased damage? Unlucky. Uh, link clusters, don't care too much about these. If I'm going to be honest with you, maybe links will be good at some point in the future. Mark clusters as well. They just moved around some stuff from the masteries into the clusters. Same thing with poison for the most part. Then the recovery clusters, we're getting a bunch of new like regenerate life or recover life or recoup life from a bunch of different areas of the tree. They're putting in a bunch of stun avoidance stuff, which I don't really care too much about, to be honest with you. Maybe some stun stuff can be good, but I honestly, you should be trying to not ever be stunned, so not too happy about that. They've improved some like cooldown recovery rate on war cries through the qualities that you get here. It goes up to 20% now. They've changed a couple of things around, but nothing too crazy as far as I can tell. The ascendancy changes, I'm going to make an entire separate video so that this one doesn't go too super long about specifically the changes to the saboteur as well as the pathfinder. And the Ascendant TLDR, I'm not super happy with either of them. I think they might potentially be nerfs, but it may just be a wash at the end of the day. We'll see. Also, I'm not really going to talk too much about the early game changes. Um, TLDR, they made the early game more difficult in my opinion. I'm honestly really not happy about this. 
Um, they're trying to make it more even so that there's not any cool tricks that you can do. So they've removed all of the cool stuff that you can do. Like notably, they got rid of the onslaught support. They got rid of like the base wand recipe that gave you added damage to spells. They removed all of the spell damage off of all of the wands and have made it so that they all have like added damage now. So it's going to make it significantly harder to get a high end game wand most of the time now. And it's making it so the leveling is probably going to be a lot more difficult for spell builds it's it's all a problem i'm gonna make a whole separate video about all of this leveling stuff arcane surge is having its more spell damage change with cast speed which i guess will probably be good early on but for any build that just used it as a more spell damage just added onto their build that's been nerfed now so that's not great and then in like some just random player balance stuff they've gutted molten shell the, it, molten shell was definitely more strong than the other ones but i wish they would have buffed the other ones up to match molten shell instead it really just kind of feels like they're taking away more and more and more and more of these defensive layers that they gave us pre previously and unfortunately it, it just kind of feels like step one was say oh well we've given you all these defensive layers so we're going to start toning damage down a little bit but now they haven't given us any of that damage back but they're also removing the defensive layers that they gave us so it's kind of like Okay, I, I guess that's cool. We're, we're just, we're, we're, we're losing defensive layers again. They've normalized the way that projectiles work. I'm assuming this is to kind of nerf Nemus is what I'm assuming. Uh, they buffed power charges. They're giving a little bit more critical strike chance per power charge, which I guess is cool. And then under item balance, they've removed the synthesis implicit that gives you bow attacks, fire, and additional arrow. We've gotten this as a point on the tree, so that's probably okay. And probably my least favorite change of this entire thing is that books of regression no longer exist which means that infinite heist is no longer a thing um yeah i'm not super happy about that but it is what it is i'll make a video saying something about how infinite heist is no longer a thing and whether or not i like it or dislike it they made a bunch of changes about ruthless honestly i, I i'm kind of getting upset that i watched the reveal and there was literally like a 20 to 30 minute period where ziggy and chris were just talking about specifically ruthless and how they're making changes to the game and about ruthless now when it was supposed to just be this weird passion project that wouldn't affect the main game but now it's affecting the main game and they're also making it so that the the like the race that people are supposed to be doing is in ruthless 2 now i mean like come on dude the league mods look amazing these are probably some of the best league mods from Kirk that we've ever had absolutely absolutely stacked list so that's good and then a bunch of other small bug fixes and that is going to be it for the video honestly a lot of buffs a lot of nerfs but there hopefully should be enough interesting stuff here to not be too big of a deal i really am just waiting on path of building to update at this point to see how big of a nerf these like mana reservation changes are and I, I really genuinely hope that these nerfs aren't as big as they are seeming in my brain when i'm looking at everything here so uh yeah so remember boys if you're enjoying this content make sure to give this video a like subscribe to youtube channel hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and stay safe out there in ray class and i'll see you guys in the next video